All right, your girl is live after a 25 minute delay. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to <laughs> move my chat out so I can read everything. <clears throat> and I know that my voice is probably a little, what's the word? Horse. I almost said hearse. My, I know that my voice is probably a little hoarse, but better late than never. And let me also notify my manager that I'm live. I'm live. Okay. Well, well, well. I have not been on Twitch in a hot minute. If you look on my page, it'll literally say, it's been two months since you last streamed. I'm like, damn, Twitch, y'all ain't got to remind me. <laughs> but I told myself, I was like, well, Morgan, you're supposed to be going out of town this weekend. And when you get back, you're not going to feel like streaming. So you might as well go ahead and stream now while all this DreamCon stuff is still fresh on my mind. Because my memory is not what it used to be, okay? But I did want to take the time to do a short, short, little uh, DreamCon recap. Because I noticed that that's what a lot of people that went to DreamCon have been doing. They've hopped on the stream and let all the Twitch folks know everything they did, everything that happened. And I was like, you want to know, you know something? I should do that too because one I haven't streamed in like I'm not gonna say two months I'm gonna say like a month and a half actually I'm not even gonna say a month and a half it's been a little bit less than a month because I well actually it might have been two months because I think that was at the end of May and now it's the end of June not in the end of June end of July so and I told myself that I did want to do some more streaming but uh, I have learned that me playing video games on stream, mm, I don't know, 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 I don't know if that's for me. I might be able to do it from time to time, but... Oh, I should actually pull up my chat from Twitch. Let me do that very quickly because um, Twitch always be sending me these notifications at the last second. Give me one second. I'll go to my channel because I like having my, um, my pop out chat settings. How do I pop my chat out? I know I seem like such a grandma trying to uh, get my life together on Twitch. Here we go. Pop out chat. There we go. I need my Twitch chat. There. Much better. Much, much better. Okay. So... And I also have to have my YouTube up in the background because I said I was going to watch some YouTube videos after this. We going to see. We going to see. We going to see. We going to see. Okay. So, once 930 is, you know, I, I like to wait for the even numbers to start, uh, start really deep diving into stuff. But... I, I haven't even gotten a chance to get all my thoughts together because DreamCon, it was so much going on. Hey, Monty, how's it going? I saw your um your your DreamCon vlog that you upload today, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really liked that um that conversation that you had with Heartstop Lucas. Eli so twitchy, you're what's good, man. What's good? I uh yeah, I was watching um I like that part. Y'all you was talking to Heart Stop Lucas. You were like, is this blackface? He was like, that is blackface. <laughs> and I was very happy that you had um I don't think you had like asked him like when he's gonna upload, but you were kind of like, okay, so when the content coming, cause 
it wasn't until I saw Hard Stop Lucas. I saw, I think he was like the very first content creator creator that I saw at um at DreamCon. Like literally he was the very first one I saw on Friday. And so I chatted with him and I got a picture with him. And then like later that night, I was like, wait a minute. This man ain't posted nothing in literally like over a year. I was like, I didn't even notice that. But you know, just like you were saying in the video, I you know you can't blame folks because I know this whole content stuff. It has its ups and its downs. And and in other words, sometimes you don't want to be well. We as much as we want to post consistently. It doesn't always happen. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm good, and thank you so much. I really appreciate it so much. Part two coming. Okay, I'm excited for part two. Part one was great. Mani. Oh, yeah. Eli hooked Mani and me up with our first ever voice acting roles. So if y'all aren't already, go check out Eli's YouTube channel. Um, it's lit, okay? I, um, that was my very first time ever voice acting. And let me tell you something. That shit is serious, okay? <laughs> it is not easy because all I had was three lines. And one of those lines was a scream. And I had to redo those three lines like four times each because I wanted to get it just right. It's lit. Hey, babe. He was so nice and really took the time to talk to me and my brother. That was very sweet of him. And that was something that I was very thankful for. Uh, everyone that I talked to at DreamCon, they were super cool, super nice, super sweet. I didn't have a single negative experience, and I'm very thankful because, you know, there are some people out there who... You know, they might put on a nice persona online, but in person, they might be a little mean. But luckily, everybody I talked to was super cool, super chill, super nice. Hi, Eli. The junk is hard, especially when you're first starting off. That's, you could definitely say that again. When you first starting off, that'd be the hardest part because, you know, that's when you uh, might not have as much support as you would want, just like with this Twitch, Twitch stream, I almost said Twitch stream, just like with this Twitch stream, it's like, it's nerve wracking, you know, and I'm very thankful for the followers that I have on here, I think I have like a hundred some followers now, and that is a huge deal, and so, I'm very thankful, and I do know it's a huge deal, but it'd be those days where I look at these people that got these thousands and millions of falls. I'm like, ah, i <laughs> But um, let's see. Man, that was fun. I want to do it again. And we are going to do it again. We going again next year, girl. We going to DreamCon 2023. Word on the street is that they're going to drop tickets in like a month. So I need to be ready when they drop them tickets because let me tell y'all something. They had three ticket drops and I looked up, I looked up, I looked up and got my tickets during the last drop. So I'm not trying to do that again. Uh, I just heard a sound. Oh, thanks for the follow, uh, Sean Sama 54 I appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. But, uh, yes, I'm definitely getting tickets for next year. And since I was, you know, a general admission basic bitch this year, I want to be a VIP plus baddie like Monty was this year. I want to be one of those next year. Because let me tell y'all something. <laughs> let me tell y'all something. There were some times where they was treating us general admission folks less than, okay? They was treating us like we was some bums. I was like, wait a minute, this ain't right. I bought my ticket. I deserve to 
I actually didn't deserve to do what I was doing <laughs> because um, what had happened was the line for the family feud, y'all. Let me see if I have a video of how packed. Like, when I tell y'all that hallway to get into the family feud, and I think it was the, um, was it the Burleazy family feud or something? I'm going to show y'all a video. It's on my phone, so of course it's not going to, you know, look all that. But it was absolute, like that hallway, it was packed from wall to wall. Everyone I met was the same online and in person. That's what I'm talking about, girl. That's a good thing. Damn, where are all my videos going? I'm going to have to look on Instagram. I'm going to show y'all this video. Goat Morgan, what's good, Sean? Welcome to the stream, man. Let's see. VIP plus, ma'am. Yes. During the first ticket drop they do, I'm shooting for VIP plus. Because they was treating me like I was a bum ass bitch, y'all. And I mean, you know, I, okay, I found it. And this is on my phone, so y'all probably not going to be able to see it. This is how packed it was. You could not even move. That was the line for Family Feud. So, it was crazy. And speaking of which, I do want to say this. And I this is going to be one of my first um, talking points. Not talking points, but one of the first things I need to say. RDC, they're too big now. They are too big for the Arlington Esports Stadium. And it's crazy that I'm saying that because this was my first year going to DreamCon. But with that being my first year, I can see myself like they, they need to relocate. They're going to have to relocate because literally that esports stadium cannot hold everybody and even the sheraton the sheraton can't hold anybody either because when i would go into the sheraton it was below like it was people on the steps people in the lobby downstairs people in the lobby upstairs like everywhere you went it was packed like there was if you wanted to go somewhere and get some air you had to damn near go into the parking lot so Let's see, let's see, let's see. No problem. I'm Imani's brother. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. The line skips was crazy with the VIP badge. That's exactly why I need one because I want to be able to skip the line too. I need that because um, I'm trying to think what else was it. No, it was, it was the family feud. Because they split the line. They said, general admission people got to go over here. VIP plus people got to go over here. It won nobody in the VIP plus line. And then when like a few people, they would just walk straight in. Meanwhile, you got this huge jam-packed line of people for the general admission. Baby, it was a struggle. Yeah, burly <laughs> They really are. They do need a bigger venue. It was bigger than last year. Yes. I think they were saying that they doubled the amount of attendees that they had last year. And I can see that. Because it was absolutely packed. Now, I don't know much about Texas. So, I don't know where they could, um, where they could relocate to. But... They're going to have to make some shake. They're going to have to make some shake because if it was that many people there this year, you can only imagine how many people's going to be there next year. And it's not it's not going to be room for no more people. I hate to break it to you, but ain't going to be no more room for no more people next year. Um, But where else can they go? I don't know. Maybe there's got to be like a convention center or something in either Arlington or Dallas or somewhere. Or maybe they could go to a different city in Texas. Maybe they go to Houston or something. The Sheraton was sold out months before. I definitely believe that. And then that's another thing. When I go next year, 
wherever they decide to have it at, I I I want to stay in the host hotel because I stayed in uh I stayed in an Airbnb in Dallas, and it wasn't that far away, but still like that drive, it was a little annoying. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. My stomach kind of hurting, y'all. Um, AT and T Stadium maybe. Um. AT&T Stadium, is that like a football stadium? I'm not sure. It was harder to see certain content creators too because it was so many people. Yes, definitely. It was hard to see certain content creators because, for example, I saw very few people from RDC at the actual convention. I, um... Like any content creators I saw at the uh whatchamacallit, at the actual convention at the esports there at the hotel, they were in RDC. So, um, let's see. It was easier to see big content creators last year. Dang, that made me mad that I missed it last year. AT and T Stadium ain't got conference rooms and stuff. Okay, yeah, that's why I was confused about. Cause when you say when when they said AT and T Stadium, I was like, is that a football stadium? What's good? What's good? Thank you for tuning into the stream. I'm doing my DreamCon recap. The esports arena was big enough. They just ain't organized it well. Hmm. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Um. I don't want to say that they didn't organize it well, because I think they did a good job at organizing it, but um, it would, oh, that's another thing I wanted to say. It would be nice if they could relocate to somewhere, oh, excuse me, y'all, where everything is all in one place. It's not like, okay, we have the eSports stadium, they got the main stage, the uh, exhibitor hall, and the, uh, whatchamacallit, the gaming rooms. And then you got the Sheraton that got all the panels. Like, I think it would be nice if they have it at a place where everything is all in one. Especially with it being in Texas, because with it being so hot, it was it was kind of annoying having to walk outside if you wanted to go to a panel. Like, you literally had to walk outside in the damn heat if you want to go to a panel and not just um, stay in the eSports stadium the whole entire time. I'm planning on going next year. Bet it's going to be litty. I feel like it just gets better and better. Well, I'm hoping it's going to get better and better. I've only been one year, so I wouldn't know. Monty, let me know. Was it better this year or was it better last year? Let me know. The narrow hall halls and all that, yes. Like, the hallways were definitely too narrow. I was bumping into people the whole time because Friday I was tending from Demon Slayer, so I had my swords sticking out, like, I had them on my back, so, of course, I was bumping into people with my swords, and then Saturday, I was, uh, Sage Mode Naruto, so I had my little summoning scroll on my back, and I kept bumping into people with my scroll, and I was like, it ain't enough room for us to even walk through these halls, like, we're at a cosplay convention, so some people are gonna have, you know, a lot of stuff going on, we need room to move around in these costumes. It's gonna it's gonna always be packed no matter where they go. Ah, I, I disagree with that because if they move to a bigger place and if they I feel like if they move to a bigger place there will be more room. Does that am I making sense when I say that? <laughs> I feel like if they move to a bigger a, a bigger place and, you know, of course, up the attendance a little bit, there'll be more room, I think. They should have put the gaming area in the Sheraton and used that area for panels and such. Hmm. Oh, uh, that could have worked. But I actually, I don't know if that would have worked because there was only one gaming area and they needed like, what, four or five panel rooms? I think, I know that one, that one panel room that like had the cosplay contest, the anime after dark, I feel like that one panel room was the size of the gaming room. Oh, excuse me, y'all, sorry. 
Uh, keep that shit in Texas, though, because I'm not going out of state. Now, that I agree with. They definitely should keep it in Texas since they are from Texas. I definitely wouldn't want them to move it somewhere else. I know someone, I don't know if I was watching a Twitch stream or reading some comments, someone was like, move it to Cali. I was like, fuck no. Hell no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to scream, y'all. But no, if they moved it to California, I would be so pissed. I like the fact that it's in Texas. Um, I don't think they utilized all the rooms and spaces either. I definitely agree. I definitely think that there were some spaces in the eSports stadium that they did not utilize and they could have utilized. Hold on, the chat moving kind of fast. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They had a lot more vendors too. Okay, so that's something that I was going to talk about too. I don't know if I'm spoiled or what, but I feel like there were not a lot of vendors at that convention. I'm from Alabama, so, like, the conventions that we have, they're not, like, you know, big, big, huge conventions. But the conventions that I've been to, especially, like, the ones in Birmingham, there are a lot of vendors. There are, like, six rows of vendors, and I, um... I was surprised at the amount of vendors at DreamCon because I felt like there could have been more. So I did like that they, I did like the vendors that they had because uh, with the, um, hold on, I um, I don't want to lose lose sight of my chat. I um, what was I saying? Oh, I completely lost my thoughts. I uh, I was very happy to see all the vendors there because since I'm so used to going to conventions in Birmingham and Huntsville, they, uh, going to DreamCon, that was the most black vendors I've ever seen because, like, a majority of the vendors were black. And I, I like seeing that because when I go to conventions in Birmingham and Huntsville, they barely have any black vendors there. So I did like that. Um, let's see, let's see. I'ma stay at a reasonable price hotel for me. Hey, do what you gotta do. I uh I didn't even look at the prices of the Sheraton because by the time I got my tickets, the Sheraton was sold out. I feel like last year was a little more intimate, if I'm being honest. Okay, that's definitely not surprising at all. I kinda assumed you were gonna say that because I feel like that's kind of a downside with DreamCon getting bigger, with it getting bigger, with it getting bigger, it's just going to be more and more people every year, and the more people there are, the less intimate it's going to be, and the harder it is going to be to get to actually, you know, like, talk and meet your favorite content creators, which is a a bummer for us, good for them, bum, uh, good for them, bummer for us. Let's see. So what con has the biggest place slash area in your opinion? Um, the big, the, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Uh, the biggest, um, the biggest con, wait, so what con has the biggest, um, I mean, shoot, you talking about area period or for vendors? Cause that was, um, I feel like that was the biggest convention I've been to but as far as area and space that was not the biggest convention I've been to um because I've been to conventions at like actual convention centers and there's more space there HBCU gamers what's good thank you for tuning into my stream I'm doing a dream con recap and my stomach's hurting. I, why would my stomach start hurting right when I start streaming? I hate that. Uh, maybe it's anxiety. Maybe I'm nervous. They have more rooms at the Sheraton, too. They could have used those rooms, too. Okay. Um, that's a good point. But I do wonder, um, there were so many panels at DreamCon this year. So I was thinking to myself, like, there were so many panels, so they were all, like, overlapping. So you had to choose which panels you... Oh, I'm spinning all over the place. You had to choose which panels you wanted to go to. So, like, you had to miss out on some to go to some other ones. So I feel like if they use more rooms at the Sheraton, then it's going to be, like, more options we have to make. Um... 
Oh, <sighs> y'all, my stomach is killing me. My stomach is killing me. Y'all, y'all just gonna, y'all gonna have to pause. Y'all gonna have to pause. I gonna have to drink some tea. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Ooh, hold on, y'all. I need to heat this tea up. Let me do be right back. I'm sorry. If y'all aren't here when I get back, I hope y'all are, but give me a minute. I got to heat this tea up because my stomach is acting brazy.
I'm back, y'all. I am back. <laughs> y'all, I just had kind of like a mini panic attack, but we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Put my blanket on. We getting right back to it. We getting right back to it, baby. I appreciate those of y'all that stuck around. And y'all, this tea is a no-go. The tea, I think the tea, I think it, I think it made my mind worse. Okay, so we got just plain water now. Just plain water. Forget the tea. All right, okay, so I'm going to scroll back up in the chat and see where I left off. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, everything okay? Yes, everything is okay, girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so the last thing I saw in the chat was Sean Sama said yes. Jay said, hell no. Okay, Callie is definitely a no-go. Hex no, not Callie. I'm glad that y'all agree with me on that because, baby, y'all, I be looking at them conventions in California. I be like, no, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I thought it was a lot of people at DreamCon. It be like 10 times that amount of people in California. Like, I looked at Anime Expo. I looked at San Diego Comic Con. Who? That amount of people, like, even before COVID, that's a lot of damn people. But especially now, that's just, that would just be overwhelming. HBCU Gamer said, move it to Maryland. Um, mm, no. <laughs> no hate to Maryland. No hate to Maryland. But it's like, I'm sorry, I know I'm so far back in the chat, but I'm going to feel bad if I just skip over everything. I got to acknowledge everything. Uh, Maryland, um, Maryland is in the DMV, and so when I think of that, I'm like, okay, the DMV got blurred con, so let the South have dream con, okay? Uh, let's see, Cali or hell nah, that Alabama accent is strong, I knew it, everybody tells me that. I be getting that all the time. Well, considering last year there were a lot more. Uh-oh. Held a message for a reason. Race, ethnic ethnicity, or religion. Oh, that's why I love DreamCon. All of us are all of us Negroes. Yes. Uh, and I'm very thankful because DreamCon this year, that was my first black convention that I went to. I think I've been to like six conventions. But DreamCon, that was my first black one. Let me hit allow. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where was I? Original Brennan. Hi there, neighbor. What's good, Brennan? I saw you in Monty's uh, vlog. Y'all look like y'all was having a great time. Meant to say, Arena, they should move DreamCon to the Fort Worth Convention. That joint is huge. That's what I'm talking about. That sounds perfect. The Fort Worth Convention Center, that's where they need to have it at. They're too big for the Arlington Esports Stadium. Yeah, because I wouldn't have met Burleazy without my VIP+. Plus. It just sucks that the bigger they get, the less intimate it becomes. Yeah, that's definitely true. And, um... And shoot, you're lucky that you got to experience DreamCon before um before it's gotten big. Cause I think you said this was your second year going. So I think you should consider yourself lucky because it's shooting off now. It's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. Um Brennan Hate, all good. What's good, Brody? Vibing in streams right now. How about you? So how's everyone doing? I'm weak. Y'all kept the chat going. I love it. I'm looking for all the DreamCon slander. Slander? I definitely don't want to slander DreamCon because I had an amazing time. That was the best convention I've ever been to. However, I do like to provide constructive criticism because I know that without constructive criticism, you can't grow. 
Which, I mean, kind of don't really make any sense because I'm giving the constructive criticism on my Twitch stream and it's only, according to Streamlabs, eight people watching. It'd be different if I was sitting right next to the RDC crew. But, you know, maybe if I express my concerns to y'all, people like Monty, VIP Plus, who are like this with Berlizzi and RDC in them, maybe you can get <laughs> the words of us little people to... um Sorry, I got distracted. To uh, the big folks. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Slander, that's what I'm talking about. I'm doing good, just hating. <laughs> hey, before anything, I'm a hater. <laughs> I don't have a heartbeat. I got a hate beat. You can listen to it. It goes, hate, 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 hate. <laughs> that's from a TikTok, y'all. Great, I got two big collabs coming from big YouTubers. Okay, I'm excited to see those. I'm glad I'm already subscribed. LOL, why the slander, sir? Big moves, I can't wait to see it. Yes, ma'am, I came to DreamCon on a mission. And shout out to those of y'all that use DreamCon to learn and grow and network and, like, become better because... I feel like I didn't do that at all. Like, real talk, I didn't do that at all. Like, I, I I, don't know if I was just in, like, fun mode. I think I was too much in fun mode that I didn't even stop to think, like, wait a second, I need to be asking these people for, like, advice and tips and suggestions for what I need to do to grow as a content creator. But, um... You know, I'm not perfect, and I guess I was just too focused on enjoying myself that I guess the business side of Morgan was asleep. So, yeah. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. If I don't hate, then I'm not living. Oh, that's quote. I'm taking a picture of that. That's, that's quote of the night right there. If I don't hate, then I'm not living. That's a quote to live by. I'm going to get that tatted on me. Uh, I respect the hustle. That's exactly why I went to. Okay, shout out to y'all. That is what's up. You need a better hobby. Hey, somebody got to do it, Monty. Somebody got to hate. All I do is hate and create. Where's the love, bro? I'm the opposite of Brandon. All I do is love and animate. Okay, that's cool too. Hello, I love everyone in chat. I don't know, Brandon. Make hating makes you age faster. Does it really though? I'm a certified hater, and y'all see me glowing. <laughs> Don't pay attention to me. Um, what was I reading? Welcome back, everything okay? How many black vendors does MomoCon have? Uh, that I do not know. I've never been to MomoCon before. And to be honest, if I were to go to an anime convention in Atlanta... Uh, it would probably be Anime Weekend Atlanta and not MomoCon. Um, it was weird though because uh, when I was watching people's videos at MomoCon this year, it looked super lit and it looked super fun. But then once I got on Twitter, a lot of people were like, MomoCon wasn't it. Like it, they were like, it wasn't it. And I didn't really see any explanations why. I, I don't know if people were upset with, like, the mask mandates. And then that's another thing, y'all. That is another thing. I, I Okay, before I even start talking about the shit, is, 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 is Twitch going to, like, ban me if I talk about COVID on here? Because I got something to say. Um, DreamCon... They, if they're going to keep growing like they are, they're going to have to, they're going to, they need to require tests from everybody. It doesn't matter if you vaccinate or not. They need to require tests from everybody. And I know that that can be inconvenient because like, depending on whether you have insurance or not, those tests, they can like be expensive, but I think they need to do it because I don't see the point in them only getting tests from non-vaccinated people because everybody can have it. So, um, 
that's another thing. I definitely think that with, like, especially with the it being as packed as it was this year, like, y'all, I'm going to pull up the video for y'all again. Let me pull up the video for y'all again. Y'all see how packed you can't even move. You can't even move it was that packed. They they're gonna have to they they need they're gonna have they need to test everybody and I know that I probably sound like I have a stick up my ass for saying that but they gotta do something they gotta do something because uh, I didn't get to go last year but I heard that hella people was catching that shit last year and then lo and behold this year the same shit done happen uh let's see let me I got distracted. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, I was talking about MomoCon. Um, yeah, but if I were to ever go to a convention in Atlanta, I would probably go to Anime Week in Atlanta, simply because it was too many. I I heard too many MomoCon wasn't it tweets. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Bring DreamCon to Bama. You know that's not happening. <laughs> You know that's not happening. I am happy I met who I wanted to meet, big content creators and mutuals. I definitely do agree with that. Aside, well, okay, as far as women goes, as far as women go, I got to meet all of my mutuals and all of the big uh, female content creators that I want to see. I got to see, uh, you know, Kiera, please. I, I got to see, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Taylor, favorite senpai, Crystal, I, I got to see, like, all the girls, I got pictures, I got to talk to them, as far as the guys, though, um, Burleazy, I did see, well, I saw him on the big stage, of course, but, like, I didn't get to, like, see him, um, like, out, like, you know, in public with other people, and uh, as far as, like, the RDC crew, like, I saw them at the, uh, I saw some of them at the convention. I saw some of them outside the convention. But um, I am thankful that I got to see all the women that I wanted to see because they were, they were the most important to me. Uh, nothing wrong with constructive criticism, LOL. Oh, I'm going to rely on the messages for show. This year was definitely my networking year. Last year I was star last year I was starstruck and partying. Okay, so I think that's how I was. This year I was starstruck and partying. Uh which you know it ain't nothing wrong with that. I wanted to have a good time. I was a little bit starstruck and I and I did some partying too. And um and then that's another thing. I gotta talk about the parties. Um I'm gonna make me so I'm talking about the parties, but I'm a Still read through the chat. Um, what was I reading? Oh, it's okay. Most people are when it's their first con. That's what me and Monty did the first con. I think I'm the only person that didn't that did not have an amazing time at the con. You didn't have an amazing time. Why? Um, what? What? What was wrong? Uh, why did you not have an amazing time? What's MomoCon like? Uh, I definitely don't know what MomoCon like. The the videos look lit from this year. It because it was back in May. They looked like they was having a fun time, but then when they got on Twitter, it was different. I'd say the con was good. Okay, good is worse than bad. I heard people hating on MomoCon. Me too. MomoCon Winterfest is the move this year. Okay, I've never heard of MomoCon Winterfest, but I'm going to take note of that. Like people said, they would never, like people said they would never go back to MomoCon. I saw that too. I was like, damn, you just never going to come back? Nah, everyone needs to be tested. Okay, thank you for agreeing with me on that. Not going to lie, I'm trying to get better with script writing and collabing with animators, so I'm for sure networking, even if it's my first con. And, um, that's something else I want to say. I, um, I want them to either have more panels or meetups or meeting rooms or something for specific, not niches, but like, I want them to have more that's like, I want them to have something for like, um, YouTubers, streamers, um, Instagram TikTokers, uh, animators, you know, script writers, 
manga because like I want them to I I it would be nice if they could either have more panels or meetups or like meetings or something for people like that because when I looked through the list of panels I did see the uh, how to monetize your content panel. I went to that, and I'm going to be honest, y'all. They didn't say a single thing that I didn't already know. I wish that they could have, like, stuff to, like, help people, like, grow, kind of. I don't know how to put my words together, but it would have been nice if they could have, like, some stuff about, you know, getting sponsorships, getting brand deals, um, editing, um, learning more about the Instagram algorithm, learn more about the YouTube algorithm. Like I wish they had more panels to help content creators like grow. And I hope that I'm using my words right with that. But um, let me read the script. Uh, not the script, <laughs> the chat. Uh, do you have any content? I didn't meet none of y'all. Yeah, I hate that I um, I didn't get to meet you, Eli. I didn't get to meet you, Brennan. Not as of right now, but I have two ideas. I'm still sad that we didn't meet. Y'all was ducking and dodging me like y'all owe me money. Not them ducking and dodging you. You be animated and everybody in that group chat was hidden. I'm not going to lie, y'all, like, as far as, like, meeting up with people, it was hard. Because, first of all, my phone was damn near about to die. It seemed every minute of every day my phone was just about to die. Luckily, I had my charger with me, so I would, like, you know, sneak in the game room and charge my phone. Um, but it was just so much going on. It's okay, I want to... Go, I want to get to this panel. I want to uh, go uh, get in line for this. It was just so much going on that literally, I think, Mon Monty, I think you were the only person that I, like, actually, like, text or called. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I called you, but, like, I actually messaged you to meet up with you. But literally everybody else I saw, I just ran into them. Literally everybody else, I, I think you were the only person that I actually messaged to find where you were. Uh, let's see. Hey, look, I was all over the place saying, no, I'm more so a writer. Oh, okay, okay. What was your favorite part of DreamCon? Are you asking me that? My favorite part of Dream. What was my favorite part of DreamCon? Um, ooh, excuse me. You know, people have asked, I think I've been asked this question like three times and I honestly don't even, I, my favorite part was just getting to honestly just be there. I know that's a corny answer, but getting to be there was my favorite part because just being surrounded by black excellence and black nerdiness and black innovation and so much positivity and kindness, like just walking down the hallway and people being like, hey, that's a lit cosplay. I love your cosplay. Is that Morio Lee? Blah, blah, blah. Just being there was my favorite part. Because let me tell y'all, for anyone that is on this stream, watching my stream, and you are in the nerdy realm, as in like, you know, anime, video games, stuff like that. If you want a serotonin boost, if you want a confidence boost, go to a convention, preferably a black convention, because you're going to get compliments. The vibes are going to be positive. Like, it's just a good feeling, like being surrounded by people that are just into the same stuff that you're into and enjoy doing the same things that you enjoy and you know that you're not going to get judged for it. So, um, yes, I know that's a corny answer, but my favorite part was literally just being there. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What if you do an in-home COVID test? Can you show those test results? See, them at-home COVID tests, they're not accurate. Because when I took one of those, it said negative, and I ended up having COVID. I remember that. 
So I um I personally feel like they see I I try to be inclusive like it would I would want them to test everybody but I know that different people like not everyone can afford to or has the time to get that test but I don't know it's comp it, it's complicated it's complicated I agree they do need stations or rooms for networking and stuff I agree it would be nice if they literally had like a content room if they had like a room with like ring lights I don't know if they would have to like mount the ring lights in the ground or somebody to make sure folks don't steal them <laughs> or uh, if they had to have like you know a volunteer or a staff member watching but they had like a room with like ring lights or a room with tripods where like if you want to go in there and make content you could just go in there and there's already gonna beat people in there you can network with them be like hey I got this TikTok I idea I need people to be in my TikTok like if they had like, uh, what was the name of that room? It was the something lounge. The um, the dream lounge. They had the dream lounge, which I never even got to go into because by the time I wanted to go into the dream lounge, they were starting to uh, turn it into, uh, what you gonna call it, the dodgeball room. If they had like a room, if they, instead of a dream lounge, they also had like a content lounge or something where they had ring lights, tripods, maybe like a green screen or something for people to like, you know, network and film, even something like that. Like literally you have maybe like one or two staff members in there to make sure there ain't nobody stealing the equipment. I think that would be dope. Uh, wow. I feel they should teach people how to network. Cause a lot of people have an issue with building connections with new peeps. That, you know, that could be a good idea too. Cause not everyone knows how to network. Um, let's see that part. I agree. Panels dedicated to networking. Like I saw material girl be on the very last day. I literally every time I think I saw her three times the whole weekend and all three times I just randomly ran into her. I saw her Friday, either Friday or Saturday. I saw her Friday. I ran into her Friday. She was like, hey, oh my gosh, can I get a picture of you? I turned my eyes like, oh, it's my girl. That was Friday. I ran into her at the party Friday night. And then I ran into her on Sunday when we were uh, in line for Family Feud. I just so happened to ran into her and I didn't see Hot Girl Anime either. I saw Hot Girl and I ran into her one time at the party Friday night. Didn't get a picture with her. <laughs> Tokyo and this damn big celeb. I can't stand y'all. Y'all be, oh my gosh. Um, what's good, Tokyo? Thanks for tuning into the chat. You inspired me to do a, a DreamCon recap stream. So that's what I'm doing right now. W Black Excellence, yes. Big W. But um, I'm really just going over, like, the good and the bad. It wasn't really nothing bad. I'm just giving constructive criticism. But that thing that I just came up with the, uh, with the, with the creator lounge, I just came up with that on the spot. I wasn't even planning on talking about that during the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the stream. I just pulled that out my ass. But, um, and that's another thing. When I go to these conventions in Alabama... They always send out a survey afterwards to get feedback. And granted, I know, ooh, excuse me, I know that it can be a lot to send out a survey and get feedback from thousands of people. But I really like it when conventions do that because, like, if you really do care about these people that you're taking their money from, I think that you should also consider, you know, their opinion, how they feel and whatnot. So, um, I'm definitely not expecting DreamCon to send out no survey. But, um, like I said earlier, you know, I got big celebs watching this stream now. It's big celebs like Tokyo, big celebs like Monty, Brennan. Maybe if I give y'all my ideas... Maybe y'all can put them into the mind of someone who can actually make it happen. Uh, let's see. 
meeting my mutuals i did meet at dc made it low-key worth it i think that um i think that's like a really important thing for everyone if you get to meet your mutuals i think that's that's probably the most important thing to most everyone because like you know if you don't get to see the big creators you know okay you have to try again next year but like if you get to see your mutuals that's like it's so heartwarming getting to see these people that i've been chatting with online for the past past several months it was great um yes go to a black con w black excellence like the creation station lol she's it sounds that is great the creation station something like that would be dope and to be honest that i hate to bring like you know a drop of capitalism into it but like you could easily get some sponsors to sponsor that kind of like how um uh, have y'all ever been to like a selfie museum before? They could, um, like for example, Anime Expo in LA. It was just like, what, two, three weeks ago. They had like, like for example, I don't, I don't know if it was Hot Topic or Box Lunch or whoever, but they had places that you could take pictures at. So I'm kind of taking the idea. I'm kind of molding to my own thing. Like you could have a creator's lounge where you have like this one place that fucking hot topic sponsored have like, uh, this cool, cute ass anime background for people and have like a ring light in front of it for people to make content at. And even if they don't do all that and get like, you know, brands to sponsor creation stations, literally you could just have some cute backdrops it don't even have to be a green screen but the creators lounge y'all i'ma tweet that because that shit would be lit let's see good ideas i literally only saw her one time they need you on the idea team hey look (laughs) monty said it not me um agree not you referring to me as a big celeb when you're a big celeb yourself look y'all oh that's another thing i wanted to talk about DreamCon. it was it's crazy because like it was very inspiring and uplifting but it was also a very humbling experience because like i love like when i just be at home or in my living room i just be talking mad shit to myself i'd be like yeah i'm a I'm big celeb i'm big content creator yeah i'm getting these likes bro yeah yeah i love talking shit and like you know just creating up shit in my own head and then when i get the dream con i see like wait it's people that are actually <laughs> they're actually that person like the shit that i be saying that i am like it's people that are actually that and so it's like you get to DreamCon, you see, like, it's people that are actual, like, big celebs. Like, they got people swarming around them, people following them, people trying to meet them, people trying to get pictures of them, people trying to talk to them, trying to pitch them. Like, they they, they got to, like, go and take back hallways and backpack, got to go backstage, got to have somebody with them, blah, blah, blah. You got people that are really about that. So, like, that's very humbling because, like, you know, you get to DreamCon and you see all these people and you realize, like, Okay, I, you know, (laughs) I'm just a regular person. But also, it is very, very inspiring and uplifting because you are seeing people that look like you and, like, are your age doing big stuff like that. Like, for example, with King Vader, I, like, I... I don't even watch King Vader stuff that much. Like, I I used to watch him more, like, back in, like, high school slash college more than I do now. And so, but, like, seeing someone like him and he has this big-ass movie premiere. I went to his movie premiere. And it's all these people there that are excited for the movie premiere. And, like, seeing, like, him do, I'm looking at him. I'm like, wait a minute. If he can do this shit, 
I can do this shit. And, like, not necessarily, like, you know, make a whole movie because I'm not really interested in something like that right now. But seeing people do big stuff, like, I'm, I look at them, I'm like, wow, like, these people look like me. This mean, if they can do it, this mean, this mean I can do it too. So that was like very, very inspiring. And especially with like the close, not the uh, closing ceremony. Well, yeah, the closing ceremony. Just like, like I'm just looking around like all these people are here because of RDC World. Like RDC World, they had an idea. They brought that idea to, fr- to what's the word? Is it fruition? 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 I think it's fruition. Y'all don't mind me. It's getting late. Um... I'm thinking about like they, they're a regular group of guys, black, black men, black, just like me, young, just like me. They had an idea in their mind. They brought that idea to fruition. And now look at where they, they're literally having this big ass convention with these thousands of people coming from all over the world for it. If they can do something like this, these ideas that I have in my mind that I want to do, I can do that too. So it's very inspiring and uplifting it's just it's amazing like it's humbling but it's also very inspiring um dream con it showed me that i i really want to step my game up like i want to well when i say step my game up i don't want to make it seem like i'm just not doing shit but like it really makes me want to keep doing what i'm doing and keep growing because i see the i see the level that I could possibly reach if I try hard enough. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to see my favorite content creators like your boy Roshi, your boy Rock Lee, RTTV, and etc. Okay, okay. Meet, I meant you spin facts, ma'am. Man, it makes you remember that you're a little fish in a big pond. That That's what I was trying to say. It, it, it showed me that like, I'm definitely a little fish in a big pond, but it's nothing wrong with that because, you know, everybody starts off somewhere. So, um, you know, and it also showed me that, you know, there are good sides to being a small creator because I got to do whatever the hell I want to. I didn't have to worry about having to work no panel. I didn't have to worry about no people following me around, trying to get a picture, trying to see what the move is, what I'm doing. Like, I got to be a regular person, and I love being a regular person. (laughs) Because I do understand that, like, when you are a bigger content creator, it's going to be people looking for you. Because I didn't even tell y'all, I went into the game room to eat, slash charge my phone. There were people... There was a group of guys that came into the game room and they like went to the wall and they were literally trying to slide the wall to try to sneak into where the dodgeball was going to be. And I was looking back like, y'all trying to sneak into the dodgeball? Like, it was people like, like... I don't want to say that was acting crazy, but I was like, y'all are doing a lot just to go see the dodgeball. <laughs> like, it, it's nice being a regular person because I ain't got to worry about some folks trying to be shysty just to see me. Um, let's see. It gets you motivated to keep going for real. For real. I'm, I, it definitely motivated. That shit put a fire up under my ass for real. I want to build an army of haters. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to lie. I do too. Because you have to be real. Like, if you get big, you're going to have haters. And if you don't have haters, you're not big. That's how I know that I'm not big because I don't have any haters. I've never had someone come in my DMs talking to me crazy. I ain't never have someone say no hating ass shit. It's been nothing but positivity. I be looking around I'm like, damn, where the negative? Where the negative? Damn, I can't talk. I be like, where the negativity at? I be looking for the haters. I'm like, dang, I ain't got no haters. I need to step my game up. (laughs) 
Because let me tell y'all, I mean, it comes with the territory. So that's how I know that I'm, I got a ways to go. It's been nothing but positivity with me. I don't have any haters. Uh, let's see. That's ghetto behavior. It was definitely very ghetto. And I have a ghetto radar in my mind, too, because I was sitting down eating, but my phone was charging. So, like, my phone was over on the floor. And I sensed some ghetto activity going on. I turned around and I saw the group of guys and I instantly thought I was like, these niggas going to try to steal my phone. So I got up and I got my phone off the charger. Lo and behold, they pass my phone and they go into the corner and they trying to pull the wall back. And I'm like, I knew y'all was doing some shisty shit. I thought y'all was trying to steal my phone. Lo and behold, y'all are trying to sneak into the dodgeball. So, <laughs> I was in the dodgeball room, and honestly, it wasn't worth it. My feet was hurting. Oh, dang, I hate to hear that, because I was saying that watching, oh, excuse me, I was saying that uh, watching it live, not watching it live, uh, going, I was saying that going to the watch party wouldn't be worth it. Cause I was like, well, if I'm gonna go to a watch party, I could just, you know, watch it on my phone. But the fact that you said that you were in the room and it wasn't worth it. Mm. But, um, I will say, even though I wasn't interested in that dodgeball tournament at all, I'm very, uh, happy that RDC world was able to get that because I know that Pizza Hut or House of Highlights or whoever was spawned, I know they threw that bag at RDC World. I know they threw that bag at them. I know they did. I know they got hella money off of that shit. I got a little bit of haters. Okay, Eli. <laughs> Eli got him some haters. That's what I'm talking about. I can't be a hater. Y'all got that. I'm so weak. I got a few hate. Uh, I got a few haters from home. Been deleting their comments on my videos. What they be saying on your videos? And let me tell y'all some. I can't say this from experience because I don't have haters. But word on the street is that the the hometown haters, them the ones that started off, them be your first haters. The haters that be from your hometown. And I would assume that it's because, you know, people kind of like earlier how I was saying, like, I'll see people that look like me doing big things and that inspires me. Like it sh like it shows me what I can do and that I can make it can accomplish it. It makes me want to, like, you know, go harder and keep grinding with them hometown folks. They see somebody that looks like them doing it big. And instead of getting inspired, they get angry. They like, oh, they must, you, th you think you better than me? Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And let me tell y'all, I cannot wait to have hometown haters. I'm lying. I actually can. <laughs> That's something that I do not want to deal with. And it was funny because I was just thinking about this today. I, um, you know, I have certain platforms that I try to focus on. So the platforms I focus on are Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch. I know that Twitch don't get much love from me, but my top three platforms, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch. And so, uh, I told myself, okay, I'll, soon I'm going to, you know, expand into YouTube. And I was thinking, what if I got a Facebook page? And I was like, Fuck no, I do not want no Facebook page because if I get a Facebook page, all my hometown folks going to be able to see my content and I don't want them seeing my content. Y'all, I was just thinking about this today. Like Facebook, I look at Facebook as fucking, not Grand Theft Auto. I look at it as like a wasteland, like a wild, crazy wild silent hill fucking madness and i just i don't want my i don't want to put my stuff on uh let me okay i'm i'm i need to catch up on the chat y'all uh let's see i know i got haters lol i just started out here okay i saw coach ice How, is it coach ice let me tell y'all something 
Coach Ice is pretty much like the Drake of the black nerd realm. And I didn't even realize until I went to his page on Spotify. I was like, wait a minute. This man got some hits. I'm like, oh, he made this song. Like all these songs I be hearing on TikTok, songs that I have used sounds to. He made all these songs. And I hate the fact that I don't know what that man looks like. Let's see. Uh, I was raised in the A, and most of my fam is from South Miami, so I guess I have one too. <laughs> I'm so mad I didn't see him or Cookie Kawhi. Oh my gosh, Moni! I was so mad that I did not see her because I love her so, 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 so much. And I remember, I don't know if it was like Friday evening or Friday night, I looked at her story and she was posting that she was there. Like she was literally in there during the Smash tournament. I was like, bitch, I was in there. I literally messaged her. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that you were there. Are you going to be here tomorrow? And she said, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. I was like, bet. Saturday, did not see her at all. And I was so mad, but it's okay because I think she's. I think she said she's she's going next year too. I'm gonna definitely see her next year because I love Cookie Kawhi. I love her music. The biggest haters be from your hometown. Yep. Look at Young Dolph. Yep. Oh, look at any of these rappers. A lot of these rappers that be getting killed, they be getting killed by folks from their hometown because they be hating. Uh, he should have performed. He definitely should have performed. That would have been lit. Uh, but maybe it was not in the budget for him to perform. Uh, but it would have been lit if he did. It literally be your own family. My cousins be acting funny towards me. Mm, you better watch them cousins, girl. It be them cousins. Man, he should have, to be honest, but they probably would have to pay him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They probably did not have it in the budget to pay. And that was another thing I was thinking about. Do y'all think, and I, I'm i not trying to pocket watch. I'm really not. I'm really wondering how being a creator works. Like, when these creators get invited to be special guests at conventions, do y'all think that, like, the convention, does the convention... Like, I already assume that the convention pays for their lodging and their, uh, whatchamacallit, um, transportation. But do y'all think that these special guests, like, get paid to come to these conventions? Because I already think, like, if you're already paying for traveling and lodging, a flight and hotel, that's that's already got to be, like, $1,000 right there. Unless my math is off. Like, a room for three nights and then a round trip flight or round trip gas that's gotta be a thousand dollars right or am i tripping so do y'all think that these creators like get paid like not get paid for transportation lodging food i'm saying like get get a payout like you get x amount of money for coming uh, and I'm curious, I want to know that because I want to be a big creator one day and I'm wondering what's normal, what's not normal. Uh, let's see. He friends with them, perform for free. Mm. You know, I was thinking about that. I feel like with it being like a black convention, I feel like it would be okay to perform for free or at a discount. Like, it'd be different if you're going to something like Anime Expo or Comic-Con or something. Like, they need to pay you. But, um, or maybe I have it backwards. I feel like someone would say the backwards would make more sense. Um, ooh, excuse me. Hey, Morg. Hey, girl! Thank you for tuning into my stream. I, I, I saw that you were streaming uh, Apex earlier. How did that go? He still got to make his money. Yeah, that that that's the thing. Like when it comes to supporting your black your, your black friends, black businesses, we can't always ask for discounts. So, um Facebook is the feds. That's what I was saying. Like I I know that one day when I make it to a certain point, I'm going to have to have a Facebook page, but right now I want my stuff off of Facebook. I just, people on Facebook, Facebook is literally the shade room of the internet. Like you got, like on Instagram, you got the shade room, you got 
ball on alert. You got all these different pages with the internet. You got Instagram, Twitter, blah, 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 blah. Facebook is the shade room of the internet. People on Facebook, they will log on at 7 in the morning to hate on shit all day. To be menaces. And I don't want my content on there. Um, hi. Hey, girl. How's it going? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Where was I? That's why I haven't posted none of my vids on Facebook. Same. I was punching air that I couldn't find her. I was in the exhibitor hall looking for her. Could not find her. Nipsey. Yep. He got killed by a hometown hater. I feel like they get some type of payment for panels and events, maybe. Okay. Okay. It would make more sense if someone, like, if someone actually has a panel, it would, uh, that would make sense. Um, let's see. Sorry, y'all. I had a strand of hair on my lap. As far as DreamCon goes, I don't think they pay them. I think they all just fuck with the vision and RDC enough to come for free. I think that's what I was getting at earlier. I, um... I would not be surprised if, like, RDC slash DreamCon, like, covered their travel and lodging. But as far as, like, a payout, um, I wouldn't be surprised they don't get a payout. Most of the time, they just show love by coming. The host may do something out of courtesy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, about 1K and up. Oh, those are some cute, uh, whatchamacallit, emotes. I got too much family on Facebook, I can't do it. See, no, Facebook, I don't care about my family, um, seeing my content. And that's something that I'm very, uh, privileged and fortunate and blessed to say. Like, my, my family supports me. Because let me tell y'all, my mama, she don't know nothing about anime. But she always be texting me like, send me your video, Send me your pictures. Like, she, like, my, my mama be supporting my cousin. She be like, send me the pictures of the characters you're dressing up as. Like, my, my family, like, I really do appreciate them. I'm not worried about them. And especially because I have, like, several family members that watch anime, too. So, like, they, they, they love it. But I'm just talking about, like, I'm talking about the people I went to high school with. There you go. I'm talking about the people I went to high school with. Because the people I went to college with, they fuck with my content. But the people I went to high school with, y'all, I do not want all of them seeing my content. Because I do not want to hear their mouth. Facebook full of ops, for real, for real. Yes. Yes. Facebook is the shade room of the internet. My parents watch every YouTube video that I create from start to finish. Amen. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. But, um, I be feeling bad for, uh, people that, you know, have family that be hating. But no, that shit be happening. Cause just like there's hometown haters, there do be family haters too. Say, uh, I don't even remember the last video my mother watched. I'm so weak. Um, you know, some, some people's parents, you know, they, uh, if they, if they don't know what you're talking about, they, you know, might not watch it. Uh, same. And I'm a PK, but I tell my family about my interests. What's a PK? I think I unsubbed her from my account. <laughs> Man, y'all, our parents, they don't be knowing nothing about this anime shit. I feel you. A few of my homies from high school mess with my content. Mess with it in a good way or the bad way? Preacher's kid. Oh, okay. Okay, so you said same and I'm a preacher's kid, but I tell my family about my interests. You know what? It's interesting that you say that because I never even, like, thought about explaining, like, anime and stuff to you know preachers kids and like preachers and stuff like that because it wasn't until I talked to one of my co-workers about uh anime because I was telling them about Naruto I was telling them about De about Demon Slayer and so I was trying to explain what they were about but I didn't want them to judge me because I was like okay yeah Naruto is a show about this boy and he has a demon in him <laughs> and I'm like 
Ooh, maybe I should have worded that differently. Cause I want the I want them to be interested in Naruto, but I'm like, damn, now that I done told them it's about this boy that got a demon in him, now they ain't gonna wanna watch it. I'm talking about demons, so I'm like, yeah, it's about the show's about demons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I always have to be careful like explaining animated people and y'all I also have to be careful explaining streaming to people because it's so many people that when you explain to them what streaming is I feel like a lot of them immediately think that you're talking about OnlyFans <laughs> I'd be like yeah I, uh, people can subscribe to my content and they're like <laughs> <laughs> so it's like oh let me get some water real quick You got to be careful explaining like anime and content creating shit to people because if you use the wrong words, they're going to think it's something completely different. Good. A lot of hater, haters, though. Growing up watching anime slash cartoons, I don't know how many times I heard, that's demonic, that's the devil. I mean, shoot, the, be the best anime be having demons and shit because... Naruto, okay, so the Nine Tails Fox is is not a demon, but the concept of it is pretty much like a demon. Demon Slayer literally is about demons. Inuyasha, demons. It's like you be you be wanting to explain the plot to folks, but I feel like with some people, as soon as they hear some shit like that, they don't want to listen to it. But you be like, no, it's cartoon. It's good. <laughs> I can only net, not only fans. <laughs> yes, that people. Some people be thinking it's only fans. Uh, I can only name two family members outside of my immediate family that like anime. Hey, I mean that's that sounds pretty average to me. Um, the only people in my family that watch anime, my brother watches anime, and I have a little cousin that watches anime. So. I mean, it, it's it's good if you have family members that support you even if they don't know what the fuck anime is. But, of course, there's always going to be some people. Like, kind of like I have friends who, uh, like, they don't really know what anime is, so they, like, don't really watch my content for real. But I don't judge them because, like, kind of like I have friends that make, like, uh, fitness content, like, I like it, and I keep moving. Like, I don't care how many reps you did. I don't care about this new exercise. I'm a like. I might comment some flame emojis like, yeah, this is lit. But, like, I'm not really going to put a lot of energy into it because it's, like, I don't know anything about it. I don't really have a care for it. I hope I hope that don't sound bad. Um, Demon Slayer, low-key a Christian anime. Niggas slaying demons. How is that demonic? No, we can't say that because Tanjiro, he be, <laughs> he be feeling bad for the demons and he be trying to like console them and whatnot, <laughs> which I mean, which like mor morally is a good thing, but it's like, you know, <laughs> it'd be different if he was like, y'all going to hell and then killing them, but he'd be like, dang, I hate I got to do this and he'd be killing them. Man, being nerdy girl out the cousins was tough. The constant judgment. Why you always watch cartoons? That's how it be. Them Chinese cartoons. That's how it be. Man, but I mean, people can't even use that as an insult now because it's a lot more adult cartoons now. Like back in the day, you had The Simpsons, Family Guy, Futurama, South Park. That was it. But now it's a lot more adult cartoons now. So it's like you like like it like somebody they can't like somebody that watches Family Guy should not be saying anything to us about watching anime. Anybody that watches the Boondocks can't say anything to us about watching anime. Cause at the end of the day, it's all animated. They're all cartoons. Um this comment got me weak. <laughs> Demon Slayer Loki, a Christian anime. <laughs> Reminds me of Ichigo from Bleach. 
Because the demons were once human. That's just like when God cast the devil out of heaven. I'm sure he felt bad for him. Hey, that is, that's true right there too. That's true. W take. I agree. Now you got Archer, Rick and Morty. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I, I do not get the Rick and Morty hype. Like there are people that are obsessed with Rick and Morty, like how we're obsessed with anime. I'm not a big fan of Rick and Morty. I don't see... I'm just not into it. I don't really vibe with Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's so mid. Okay. Thank you, Rick and Morty's low-key trash. Okay, I'm glad y'all are agreeing with me. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are agreeing with me. I thought that I, I... I just don't see the Rick and Morty hype, like... People be pushing Rick and Morty. I just don't really vibe with it for real, for real. There are like some Rick and Morty TikTok sounds that be having me laughing. Like that one where it was like, well, why did you bring me into this? Because he brought me into this. Oh, he brought me into this. He brought that sound is really funny. But like, as far as the show itself, it's not really that funny to me. It's just another cartoon to play in the background while I fall asleep, just like Family Guy. Now, I love me some Family Guy. I'm not about to compare Rick and Morty to Family Guy, because I love Family Guy. But Rick and Morty, I don't see the hype. Rick and Morty slander, LOL, is not that bad. I'm not going to say that it's a bad show, because it's not bad. Like it had, it, It's had some funny moments, but um, it just doesn't really do anything for me it's funny to me and i like the space adventures i um i feel like the space adventures would probably those probably reel the most people in especially with like the scientific shit that they be doing family guy stays on in the background i'm so weak <laughs> i love me some family guy same <laughs> yeah whoo yeah i've done a lot of talking and it's getting late, but let me see what time. Oh, it's 10.53. I might need to end this stream at 11, y'all. I got to work tomorrow. But really quickly, I am going to do a very quick DreamCon recap. I'm going to do it real quick, all right? So Thursday, I get to Dallas. We get the rental car, and we... I can't remember if we checked into our Airbnb or if we went to pre-registration. I went to pre-registration, got my got the badges in like less than five minutes. That night, when it got food, when it got drinks, went to the skating rink. Skating rink was fun. Didn't really stay long, but it was fun. Friday. Friday was definitely my favorite day of the convention. That was personally my favorite day of the convention. I think I'm saying that because... I was just so ecstatic to be there. I was like, wow, after all this time, like, I'm finally here, I'm here. Friday, I did my Tengen, uh cosplay. It was people asked to take pictures of me, take pictures with me. Of course, that felt great. Uh, got to go to the, um, the Smash tournament. Got to go to the uh, King Vader movie premiere. Got to see um, a lot of different content creators. Friday, I didn't go to the, uh, I don't think I went to a single, did, I don't think I went to a single panel on Friday. Uh, but Friday, um, got to see a lot of my mutual, got to see a lot of my content creators. Friday night, went to Club Dream, didn't get there till like 1230, had a great time. I had a great time at Club Dream. I heard there was some, um. Uh, I heard like before I got there, like it was hard. People like people like were struggling to get in, like the line wasn't moving. But when I got there, we literally walked right in. And Mark was at the door, so I did get to say hey to Mark. Got to introduce myself to him, ask him how he was doing, blah blah yada yada. Uh, got drinks, didn't pay for them. Got to do some dancing. Got to hear some good music. Went to the after party after that. The after party in a fucking warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Stayed there for a little bit. Went home. Saturday, I did my Sage Mode Naruto cosplay. Uh, loved it. That was one of my favorite cosplays to date. 
And something I do want to say is, oh, damn, my mom just texted me. I forgot I was supposed to call her. Um, And this is, uh, I, I hate to bring the subject up at, towards the end of my stream. Unpopular opinion, people that make their own cosplays and make their own props, they're better. They're better. If I'm planning ahead, should I be there the day before? Yes. If you if you if you go on a DreamCon next year, DreamCon is Friday to Sunday. You need to get there on Thursday. So that way you can go to pre-registration, pick your badge up, get settled into your room, and get prepared for Friday. Because me personally, uh, I flew to uh, Dallas. And so with everything that's going on with like flight delays and everything right now, I definitely want to make sure I got there the day before because my flight did end up getting delayed. My flight got delayed two hours and luckily, you know, I flew in Thursday. So I didn't have to worry about missing the convention. If you, if you, if you come on Friday, not only do you have to worry about like, you know, travel delays, you, I don't really think you have time to, like, you know, get ready for the convention. Because if you come on Friday, you're going straight into the convention. And I feel like that would be a lot. Yes, the day before I got you, I came the day of and it was hectic. Yeah, definitely. Because I know me personally, I like getting settled into my room, making sure that my room is good. I like laying out my cosplay, having everything already lined up. I missed the opening ceremony because of that. I also missed the open ceremony. It's crazy because I'm doing all, oh yeah, I got that the day before and I missed the opening ceremony. But that was our fault for uh getting ready late. But um yes. Um I did feel like I was hot shit because I made my uh own prop and I put in a lot of effort into it and I got a lot of compliments of it on it and I really was thankful for that. And, uh, let's see. So Saturday was the day where I actually went into the exhibitor hall. I got to actually buy stuff. I went to different panels. I went to the how to monetize your content panel. Didn't learn anything new. I went to the cosplay contest. I thoroughly enjoyed the con uh, the cosplay contest. Uh, I went to like this anime opening jeopardy. That was, um, that was fun. I had enjoyed that. And, um... I think those are the only panels I remember going to Saturday. Saturday night, I think that we were so tired that we just ended up not going to anything, which is crazy because I bought tickets to the official at the party on Saturday, didn't even go. And I'm mad because I let people get into my ear because someone had messaged me saying like, girl, ain't nobody going. And I was like, oh, dang, I thought this was about to be the move. So, like, once my friend had told me that her stomach was hurting and she didn't, uh, she wasn't going out, I was like, oh, sure, if you're not going out, I ain't going I'm going to my ass at home. I should have went to the party. Because, like, even if it wasn't as lit as the party the night before, I bought tickets, so I should have went. I didn't really party this dream con. Oh, I mean, shoot. I uh I didn't party Saturday night, so I'm with you on Saturday night. But I did go out Friday night. I'm glad that I went out Friday night. But um, and so Sunday, Sunday I didn't wear a cosplay on Sunday. I just you know wore a cute little Hunter Hunter shirt. I think uh Monty, I think that you had a Hunter Hunter shirt on too. And uh Sunday, let's see, I went to the Black Girls Anime Brunch. But I didn't really get to participate in any of the Black Girls anime stuff because um, they were like all upstairs and it was packed. There wasn't nowhere to sit. But um, I went to the Black Fade Day panel. That was fun. And I went to the How to Monetize Your Content panel. Oh, I went to the How to Monetize Your Content panel on Sunday. And um, like I said, I didn't really learn anything new. Um, we was matching yes. Hana Hana baby, one of the goats. Anyone know any R and B spots? Not in uh Dallas slash Arlington, no. Um, Sunday night we went to Deep Ellum, which is like um uh, kind of like a black not downtown, but it's like a black area in Dallas. And I had a good time. The place we went there was playing good music. We had good drinks. I enjoyed myself. And then, uh, Monday went home. 
So that is it for my DreamCon recap. I'm a minute over 11 o'clock. All good. I'll look it up. Um, I think this was a great stream. I want to apologize earlier for having to get up. My stomach was killing me. I think that tea did more bad than good. Because I was like, you know, I'm going to make some tea. This is about to be a cozy stream. I have my, have my blanket, my tea. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. And um, I, uh, I appreciate y'all sticking around. But, um, yes, W stream. I enjoyed you, girl. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for part two of your vlog. I've really been enjoying watching all these DreamCon recap vlogs. It's like watching DreamCon from different perspectives. So I really enjoyed, uh, watching your vlog. Hearts, 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 hearts. But anywho, y'all, I hope that you all have a great night. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm just, I'm glad that I streamed. I told myself, like, Morgan, you need to go ahead and not, just go ahead and do a DreamCon recap stream. Go ahead and do it now while it's still fresh on your mind. Love you, girl. Love you, too. Lit stream. Thank you, thank you. Get some rest. I definitely will. Your girl got work tomorrow. So, um, on that note, I love y'all. God bless. Thank you for tuning in. Hope y'all have sweet dreams. Uh, <laughs> And my man subscribed to me. Thank you so much. I have to I have to remind myself that I'm a Twitch affiliate because I be forgetting. I really be forgetting that I am a Twitch affiliate and that people can subscribe to me. Thank you so much, babe. Um, so yes, um, thank y'all so much for tuning in. If y'all don't already follow me, give me a follow. I'll follow you back. And uh I'm not sure when my next stream will be, but you know. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll always let y'all know when I'm going live. So, on that note, good night, y'all. Love y'all. Let me end the stream.